Large inverters for grid-connected PV systems typically have built-in second-level combiner boxes. Often, manufacturers offer several options for the second-level combiner box. This true example shows how the choice was made between the available options for a specific inverter. The choice was closely tied to choices for the first-level combiner boxes. To preserve confidentiality, we have left out details of the project that are not necessary for understanding the points we are making. The project was a 3 megawatt ground mounted utility scale PV system. The developer had arranged to buy modules at a good price from a little known Chinese manufacturer. However, they were UL approved and on California's list of approved components, so there was no big reason to object to using them. The system was being designed for a specific location that the system developer was in the process of purchasing. A preliminary sketch of the array is shown here. Notice that due to the shape and orientation of the location, the rows of modules have many different lengths. It turned out that the string sizing had been done wrong. When you become involved in a project, it is good to check the string sizing calculation. You would also like each row to be a multiple of the string length, so changing the string length affected the layout. The location and the modules were the two important constraints on the design of the system. We chose the Selectria 500 kilowatt inverter over inverters of the same size from other manufacturers. The main reason was that Selectra and the local utility had experience working together on large PV projects. In addition, Selectra had recently been awarded a federal grant to work on interactions between the inverter and the grid operator, which seemed like a valuable advantage. We should also mention that we were pleased with the help we received from the sales staff. Here is a general schematic for the DC side of the PV system. We see that we have a number of strings of modules connected to each first level combiner box. The outputs of the first level combiner boxes are connected to a second level combiner box located inside the inverter. Some systems have a second level of combiner boxes outside the inverter, so the combiner box inside the inverter would be the third level but this was not necessary in this system. Second level combiner boxes are sometimes called recombiner boxes and Selectria calls them sub-combiner boxes. Note that there is a fuse for each string in the first level combiner boxes and that there is a fuse for each first level combiner box in the second level combiner box. This is common. So the tasks were to choose the size of the built-in second level combiner box from the manufacturer's options choose first level combiner boxes, and choose fuse sizes for all the combiner boxes. These tasks are interrelated. Here are the features of the modules that influence the combiner box choices. The rated output power of each module was 290 watts. To meet the NEC low temperature requirements, we could only have up to 11 modules per string. This did not give us as high a voltage as we would have liked, so certainly we did not want to have fewer than 11 modules per string. The rated power of each string was 3,190 watts. The rated short circuit current of a module or a string was 8.45 amps. Fuses need to be sized for the short circuit current times 1.25 times 1.25. This value comes to 13.2 amps. First level combiner boxes are available from several sources, including some sold by Selectria under their brand name. The most common sizes for first level combiner boxes are for combining 8 strings and for combining 16 strings. The three choices for built in second level combiner boxes in this inverter are shown in this table. For each number of inputs there are only certain fuse sizes available. Now that we have collected all of this information we are ready to start working on a design. How many strings do we want to connect to a 500 kilowatt inverter? An approximate target number of strings is the rated power of the inverter divided by the rated power per string. This comes to 156.74. Of course, we need to use an integer number of strings. Usually, we want to use a little more than this number of strings. But a little less is also okay if necessary. The number of strings just shouldn't be too much bigger or too much smaller than 157. So we'll use 157 as a target as we consider various designs. So here's our target and combiner box choices. As a first design option, let's try using the 8 input second level combiner box. If we use this with the common 16 input first level combiner box, we would only have a maximum of 128 strings connected to the inverter. This is much less than we would like. 
If we wanted to use the 8 input built in combiner box, we would need three levels of combiner boxes. This is possible, but it complicates the design. Instead, let's try a different option. We can use 16 string first level combiner boxes with a 16 input second level combiner box. This gives us a maximum of 256 strings, which is more than enough. But we have another consideration. Remember, we calculated the fuse size for a string as 13.2 amps, based on the short circuit current of a string times 1.25 twice. This means that if we connect some number of strings to a fuse in the second level combiner box, the fuse there must be 13.2 amps times the number of strings rounded up to the next available fuse size. If we multiply 16 strings times 13.2 amps, we get 211.1 amps, rounded up to the next available size. The problem is, we would need a fuse rated to 211.1 amps or greater, but the largest available fuse for the 16 input second level combiner box is 200 amps. This is not enough. So what can we do? One possible solution is to connect only 15 strings to each first level combiner box. Our maximum would be 240 strings, which is more than enough. Our fuses in the second level combiner box only need to be a minimum of 198 amps, so we can use the 200 amp fuses that are available. But then, there are other problems. Let's take a closer look at the layout. We can see that the modules are mounted with two rows on each rack. This racking decision was already made. The best wiring with this configuration is for 11 modules across the top to make up one string, and 11 modules below them to make up a second string. This means that strings come in pairs. It is inconvenient to connect an odd number of strings to a combiner box. Inconveniences like this add to labor costs. So we might want to try using only 14 inputs to each combiner box. We still can use enough strings, and we can use the 200 amp fuses. So far, so good. But when we actually did a design like this, we had other problems. First of all, it's pretty wasteful to use only 14 inputs of a 16 input first level combiner box. But more importantly, we found that connecting 14 strings of modules to a combiner box did not work out well with the lengths of most of the rows. Very often, we could only connect 12 strings to a first level combiner box. However, we note that a combiner box with only 12 inputs requires a 175 amp fuse. With some inputs to the second level combiner box from 14 strings and some from 12 strings, we would need some 175 amp fuses and some 200 amp fuses. There was a high probability that some wires from 14 strings would be connected to the wrong fuse. This fuse might eventually blow, reducing the output of the array. It also turned out sometimes we had to connect 6 strings to an 8 input combiner box. This would require an 80 amp fuse, which could only be put in with special modifications to the second level combiner box. With a combination of 16 string combiner boxes with 14 strings actually connected, 16 string combiner boxes with 12 strings actually connected, and 8 string combiner boxes with 6 strings actually connected, this was not a good design. Yet, another option might have been to use all 8 input first level combiner boxes. These combiner boxes require a 110 amp fuse. However, we could then only have 8 times 16 strings or 108 strings, which is too few. We couldn't use the 32 input second level combiner box because the maximum fuse size is 100A. We would be limited to 7 or 6 strings going to each combiner box. This would lead to an excessive number of combiner boxes. So what do we do? Although the common sizes are 8 and 16, 12 input combiner boxes are available from some vendors. With 12 strings going to each first level combiner box, we could use 175 amp fuses in the second level combiner box. We had a maximum of 192 strings, which was plenty. However, when we did the design, we still could only use about 2 thirds 12 string combiner boxes and 1 third 8 string combiner boxes. But what about fuses for the inputs from 8 string combiner boxes? We found before that the calculation calls for 110A fuses. Let's look again at the general electric schematic. The purpose of these fuses here in the second level combiner box is to protect the wires going from the first level combiner boxes to the second level combiner box. The wires connected to the 12 string combiner boxes need to have an ampacity of at least 175 amps so that they can be protected by 175 amp fuses. If we use the same wire for the 8 input combiner boxes, we can use the same 175 amp fuse. 
But would we want to do this? After all, this wire is much more expensive than the wire we could use for an 8 input combiner box if the wire is protected by a 110 amp fuse. The answer to that question was yes. It turned out that the only practical place to locate the inverters at this site was near the northeast corner of the plot. We had to have some long wire run from the first level combiner boxes scattered throughout the array to the second level combiner boxes in the inverter, like the ones shown here. The lost power in a wire is proportional to the current in the wire squared times the length of the wire. Since wires carrying the current from 8 strings have only two-thirds the current of wires carrying the current from 12 strings, the losses with the same length of wire are less than one-half for wires connected to 8-string combiner boxes. So to the extent we could, we put the 8-string combiner boxes in the more distant locations and the 12-string combiner boxes in the closer locations. Due to the distance to the 8-string combiner boxes, we wanted to use wire with an ampacity of at least 175 amps anyway. Therefore, these wires could be protected by 175 amp fuses. We also had to make sure that the wire size was compatible with the connectors in the 8-string combiner boxes, the 12-string combiner boxes, and the second level combiner box. In summary, in specifying inverters for the project, we also had to specify the built-in second level combiner boxes. To make this choice, we had to find a second level combiner box that had the proper available fuse sizes for first level combiner boxes that worked well with the array layout. We found a reasonable solution that used 12 and 8 string combiner boxes. Unfortunately, due to problems with interconnecting the inverters with the electric utility grid at the site, the PV system was never built.